by Daryl Edmiston. He is the owner of Discovery Diving in Depew, and he's worked with police and fire dive teams in the past. Daryl, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. First, let me ask you a quick question. I guess we're going to do it like this then. Let me ask you, um, first and foremost, uh, how unusual is something like this? Well, it's, it's very unusual, especially for an experienced team like this. Uh, I mean, I can't recall the last time we've had this type of rescue situation uh, in Buffalo, and I've been diving in this area for over 40 years. Tell me, how safe is this for these divers? These men and women, they, they train like this all the time. I mean, this is still relatively safe, right? It's relatively safe, especially with the training and experience and the equipment they have. Um, but as other officers said, it's still a dangerous part of the river. In fact, it's one part of the river that very little recreational diving is done in, primarily because of the speed of the currents and the obstacles that could be under the water that could trap or hold a diver. Now, they haven't, uh, it's still a rescue mission being called. We just heard the Buffalo police say that. Um, the average size of a tank, how long can someone breathe with one of those tanks? The average tank, and there's different sized tanks, but the average tank in this situation, a really good person might get 90 minutes out of it. You know, so by that I mean somebody who's experienced, good on air consumption, conserves their air. Um, in a stressful panic situation, unfortunately 30 minutes might be all they have. So, so, so what could have gone wrong here? There were reports that the tender cable uh, had parted. Tell the folks that are listening what a tender cable is and what, how that could have happened. Well, in most cases, the tender cable is being used to help control the area that the diver is searching. So somebody either shore or on a boat is going to have control of uh, that diver so that they know they're searching a defined area. Because underwater, they, the diver has no idea where he really is relative to the area they want to search. So, uh, you know, so I imagine, I don't know, I imagine that they were doing some scenario where they wanted to, to do a localized search and keep the diver in one place. Right. Darrell, we do have some drone video that we want to show right now, and we have uh, taken this from a distance right now. But when these uh, teams go down, are they connected to each other? Obviously not. That would be unusual. No, they're not connected to each Is other. Is that for safety reasons? Primarily for safety so that they're not, uh, um, uh, not necessarily going to get snagged or caught on something and restrict another person. Now, they could have been. And if they were, I would have imagined they would have had some quick method to release if that happened. But uh, usually divers aren't tied together. They might use a line for some support or direction, but not, they're not going to be secured together like that. So there are reports also that the, the, the divers' secondary dive tanks were recovered on the water's surface. What is that? Well, divers sometimes do take what we call a, a backup system or a pony system. So it's a redundant source of air, another source of air. So if my primary source, source fails, then uh, I have another way to breathe, okay? But in this case, I think I heard somebody say that they th thought those tanks were not related, that they fell off of a boat or something. But nonetheless, I mean, divers do sometimes carry a backup source of air. Now, the visibility, they say, is about 10 feet there in that part of the Niagara River. But that current is moving very fast. That could take someone, if in fact the person is unconscious, we don't know, that could drift them very far. They could, yeah. I mean, there couldn't be a, a worse scenario for having to search for somebody than in the river, especially with the currents like that. So obviously, it's very unlikely that, it, that, that the person's going to stay in one area. Um, but then again, because of the debris and structures that are on the bottom, somebody could easily get snagged or caught and not move at all. Also, we only probably have a couple hours of daylight left, too. That makes it a lot more difficult for them to find this person. It's going to make it a lot harder, both on the surface and underwater. All right, very good. Well, this is uh, Daryl Edmison. Daryl, thanks for your expertise tonight. We really appreciate it, and we'll have you again at the uh, 6 o'clock hour as well.